registered. These are all registered, though. They're just a special purpose register. Okay, here. R0 to Rn minus 1 is a general purpose register, which is used to store operands or instructions to be executed on the ALU. Um, IR, PC, MDR, and MAR are a special purpose register that only store particular things, but general purpose can be used to store anything. So now we discuss a lot of things. We know that memory and processor are connected together. It's also connected to I.O. and many different devices. How are they connected? Inside the computer, they are connected to a thing called a bus. A bus is basically a route, routing connection that connects all the devices together. This is a general purpose bus. One of the properties of the bus is that only one, only a pair of device can use a bus at any given time. Which means if the input, if the memory and the processor are communicating through this bus, then the rest of the component cannot use the bus. It has to wait until this pair release the bus before it can request to use the bus. That is the general bus structure in every computer. Um, in this bus, when a word is transferred between unit, like between memory and processor, the whole word is transferred, which means if your word, if one word is equal to 64 bits, it means that this bus will have 64 lines that transfer 64 bits in parallel. The whole 64 bits will be transferred in parallel, go together, arrive at the same time. So now, you see that on the program execution that we just talked about in the last slide, you know that for, when memory and processor communicates, it needs to send an address, it needs to send a data, it also needs to send a control signal. And as I told you, bus can only be used by two devices at a time. So how do you fix that? In all the system, it has different um, different type of bus on system. It has at least will have a data bus, it has a address bus, and it has a control bus, which is a separate line built in. It didn't show in the picture, but normally um, um, a group of lines create a bus, and and um, the bus structure will have all data, address, and control bus. Okay, so this is the general architecture of the computer that I'll talk about today. Next, we'll talk a little bit about performance of computer. How do you measure performance of each computer? How can you tell, is this computer fast or slow? Okay, and then we'll move on to um, early chapter two, which is the data representations. Which should be a piece of cakes for you, right? Because you've done it before. This line, when I say bus, is contained more than one line. It's contained address bus, data bus, control bus, in one structure. So what can you think that will affect the performance of the ALU execution units? How quick the computer can execute depends on what? At the high level or the software level, it depends on a compiler. Have you taken compiler course? Have you taken a compiler course? No? Do you know what a compiler is? Yes? Okay. So performance first depends on a compiler, which is how fast can a high level So first, performance depends on the um, goodness of your compiler, how fast this compiler can translate a high-level language to a machine instructions. Second, it depends on machine instruction set. What does that mean? It means that in different computers, they have different set of machine instructions. If the machine instruction are specialized and has many instructions provided, then the compiler can optimize the performance by translate high level to a correct machine instruction set. So make it faster. And of course, it depends on the hardware. 
the speed of the processor, the size of the memory play, play an important role. Um, so the terms that we will use in performance are called elapsed time. So what elapsed time is, is the speed of the total time required to execute a program. And this speed, the total time, the elapsed time, include everything. Include processor speed, include I.O. speed, include um, everything basically. Hard disk speed. Normally this number elapsed time are not used to measure your processor performance because the time, it actually includes how fast your printer prints. It has nothing to do with um, speed of processor, right? So there's a different term that we use is processor time, which only measure when the processor is active. When the context switch switch it to I.O., it doesn't count. The time stop. So this is just processor time. So the goal when we execute the program is we try to maximize the processor time. This is equal to saying we are trying to maximize utilization of the processor. When you execute a program, you want processor to be busy all the time instead of having the context switch, switch to memory to I.O. all the time. That is low utilization. If your processor keep busy, it means your system has a high utilization. So you want to try to maximize processor time and you try to minimize transfer time. When processor computes any instruction, you call that a useful computation, right? When processor spent time transferring things between itself and memory, you call that an overhead. It's a communication overhead. So utilization, a high utilization, is when there is low overhead and processor is busy all the time. So that is the key. Okay, another term that I'm sure you have heard before is a clock. What is the clock? You've seen this before, right? A clock, you've taken digital class before, right? Okay, so a clock. This is a clock cycle or a clock period. So what is this period tells you? This period tell you a regular time regular time between basic steps, which means how long it takes to execute exactly one, ex one instruction before you move on to the next. So your processor depends on your clock speed. Each clock, you can execute one instruction. So you can say it's a million instructions per second. That can be the speed of your clock as well. A clock is a signal used to control timing and processor. Why do we need to control timing? Because different device in the computer, they don't have the same speed. But every time you execute instructions, you need to synchronize everything, right? Everybody has to finish with this before everybody can move on to the next. So there is synchronization that is necessary. So the clock is used for that. Which means you have to wait until the rising age or the falling age of the next clock before you can begin the next thing. So that is used for, for synchronization. Okay. So if I say P is uh, length of one clock cycle, so this is P. P is the length of one clock cycle. Then 1 over P would be what? Number, yep, it would be number of clock cycle per second, right? And let's call that R. Cycle per second, what is cycle per second? Cycle per second can be defined as a hertz, right? You know what a hertz is, right? That's a cycle per second. So what is the speed of regular processor today? You know, how many hertz? Hmm? I actually don't know. The fastest I've heard is 2.4 gigahertz. Is that still true? Is that the fastest now? Three? Okay. So if there's a three, three gigahertz is 3,000 million cycle per second.